and then you, that's how you start it. Um, oh. What's up, guys? Hey, everybody. Um, this is the Learning to Lose podcast with Patrick Ridge and Billy Brandenburg. And Corey, do you want your Co- last name? Yeah, let's go. Cool. Okay. Corey Beard. Corey Beard, Kelly's brother. And uh, we actually just recently had Corey on. And the reason I wanted to have him back on was because I think Corey's been doing some soul searching and it sounds like he's, I don't know. What's the saying? Uh, the monkey's off my back, but the circus is still in town. That's a saying that they told me one time. Yeah, that makes sense. In a meeting. Cause it's like, I feel like for so long I, I carried around this like weight of like not fully surrendering to what my problem was, you know? Right. Yeah. I feel different now than, I mean, I've, I've had times where I didn't drink for 30 days, 60 days or whatever. But right now I feel totally different about it. I feel much more peace about it. And, 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 and then I even admitted to myself that, yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm an alcoholic or whatever, right. but it feels different now that, you know, I never had in mind that I would be done, like right. just done with right. it. Or, or even that you could be. Or that I could even, right. Yeah, that's the cool part. I, is feel, it's, I feel a lot of peace about it. Yeah, like there is a solution. Right. There is like a way out, but we don't know that. We yeah, don't believe that. But we're here to tell you that like, yeah, it's there is a way out. I can relate with that, just a piece about it. Right. Yeah. I still have fear and things about, like, the idea. It's overwhelming, the idea that, oh, I'll never have a drink again. I didn't but do it, that. I told myself I'd try a year. I mean, what could that hurt, right? No, it's, yeah. it's, you're that's honestly, it. like, that's the other cool thing about this program is it's, it's really not, you're not supposed to be, like, for, like, you shouldn't even be tripping on that. You should just be tripping on today. Right, I think I just... So you actually haven't drinking since, like, whatever, a week ago or something? December 3rd, yeah. So we should probably just let them know. Because I worry every night about you. Yeah, since we talked about it and I, did, you know, made a commitment. And, yeah. So and, Corey was on the podcast a couple weeks ago, I think it yeah, was. Yeah, but, 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 but we're going to post these in a row. Oh, I'm gonna post the the the, the well, first sometimes one. Sometimes they listen. Sometimes it goes weeks between listening. So I just want to let them know. So Corey was on the podcast. No, no, no. So check it out. Every single Tuesday, we post a new podcast, uh-huh. and the first Corey podcast has not been posted yet. Uh huh. And this one will be posted right after that one. Right. Well, that's that's perfect. But still, just in case they don't listen to it. The listener doesn't listen to it for a month or something, which sometimes I do. Right, right. So Corey was on the podcast, and we were just talking like we normally do. And then he came to us a couple of days later and said, yeah, I think I'm an alcoholic. I want to get sober. And so that's why we're doing it again here just to, I don't know, kind of watch the progression of somebody getting sober and it's realizing amazing. it. And I mean, this is amazing. How this is feel. kind of like I feel like something I've wanted to happen with you know whoever there's been a few people on like Goodman and like Tim just different people that like you know we were and and I'm not actually even saying that I knew that I know whether anyone is or isn't like I swear I honestly was when when we finished the podcast I'm thinking okay he's probably not I didn't yeah me too (laughs) you had me convinced but but there was one thing that you said that I'm now realizing I think what you meant towards the end you were like I thought we were gonna go harder on the question I I think what you were saying was you were kind of hoping we were gonna push you to see your alcoholism I wanted you to draw it out of me yeah because I knew it was there but you know what's cool is that you did it and you're the one who has to do it it shouldn't be us and if you're really practicing a program you're not like forcing someone to see something like they have to see it on their own. And that actually speaks volumes of like our recovery because we had Goodman on the podcast one time. And like, I feel like Hillary was going hard at him. 
Mm. But it's that's and me you, and good you too. No, I feel like me and you were sort of like I don't know. Oh well, you have a history with him, so you. But I saying, still don't know. Oh, I still don't know. Right. I was just trying to help him see the wreckage, and he was like, you know, trauma. This it was her. The, the, it was a difficult situation. And I was like, all right, well, cool. Like, uh, well, then you must not have a problem with, with drugs and alcohol. And like, uh, teach his own. Like, I don't think any alcoholic should be pointing their finger at any other person saying you have a problem. Right, but I think you, like you were saying, just pointing out the wreckage. Allowing someone to see mm-hmm. what's there without this, you know, accusative statement. Yeah. So. so what happened after the podcast? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, I I prayed about it. And I had prayed about it before, and just you know, because there were certain questions that were asked, and when we talked about this idea of the, a periodic, I think is how you labeled it. And I wanted to really search and, and and as we talked about that idea and you asked me, Oh, have you ever called uh, anybody when you were thinking about drinking to And then I said, Well yeah, I have called somebody because I felt like I didn't have control of it and I needed to talk through it when at a time when I was taking a you know, I don't know, it was like sixty days that I wasn't drinking. But what do you call and, that take taking a sciatica? I don't what know. do you call that? A sabbatical? Yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> a sciatica. What's a fucking take a sabbatical? I never even knew what that meant, but people, I, what is that? A sabbatical. A rest or a break. Yeah. From so that's like, that's what you've done in the past. Right. And then you made a statement like, well, that just sounds like this, like that just sounds like alcoholism because it, essentially whether or not I can stop for a certain amount of time, it's when I do drink I don't have control of it. Like, I mean, and it, and it only gets worse with, you know, they say it's a progressive disease, right? but also something for me to think about is just the, the hot, like, are you like the, the, the biggest epiphany that I, that I've had about like realizing whether you're an alcoholic or not is just like how much you think about that question. Right. You could literally be sober for like, a year but if you're thinking about it every day right you're an alcoholic right and that came up and it was only days after i had like admitted to myself that i am powerless over this and 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 in your sermon on the mount meeting the question came up to someone who's not an alcoholic do you think about that right. and it was really revealing to me because of that question creeps in, you know, immediately after you make a commitment, like, am I really an alcoholic? Do I really need, like, am I, is it, am I going overboard with this and just making a rash commitment or something? But that made it really clear to me that the fact that I have been asking myself that question for 20 years, like that that question has no place in my mind. Rudy was, Rudy was, uh, has been sober for like 60 days and she was asking, at the meeting she was saying that she's been toying with the idea of drinking like a normal person. And we were all kind of talking about it with amongst the group. And then I asked Greg, I said, you know what, Greg, do you ever ask yourself that question? And he was like, no, (laughs) like normal people don't even like, and in the beginning of my sobriety, that was a question I asked a lot too. Like, I feel like I could just smoke, once you get a little bit of time, you start thinking about how it's going to be different this time. And then my sponsor would always be like, you know what, man? Like normal people don't even have to ask themselves that question. Right. And that's the insanity. Yeah, that's, the, that's where the mind comes in. It's a three-part disease, mind, body, spirit. So the mental obsession is believing the lie or not believing the truth or what is it? I don't know. Just believing what your head tells you after you just made a commitment, a heartfelt commitment to give it a try or 
I mean, that's our trouble even today is believing our minds. That's what are they called? The self-talking mind. It speaks with great authority and it's your, in your own voice. And so you just, you're so used to believing your, you know, yourself. Why would you even question it? But so the weird thing is Rudy's been doing the same thing and it's like, dude, if you don't have a fucking problem, why do you need to drink or smoke? You'd spend 60 days out of your fucking entire life. What's the big deal? You know? And why is she asking that question? She brought that up to me as well. When? I don't know, a few days ago or something. And I mean, it's normal. We all right, do it. Right. But. So why is your, why is your response? Like one of like, would you just say, no, I didn't say that to her. But right now you're saying it. I'm saying it that that's the insanity. Right, it is insane. Yeah. Yeah, and, and like, it's like yeah. Well, the, the, and the answer to that question is that's alcoholism. Yeah, I feel like I'm so used to to hearing that that you know that whatever that voice is that that drives you to to want to drink or smoke or whatever it is, and and I. After a few days, I just sit back and wonder, what is this voice? It's like some imposter. Mm. And I'm just sitting back after hearing you guys, you know, talk in so many different ways about this. That Just sit back in an observer and just listen to the things that it says and yeah. realize that it's not, I'm, that's not even me. Well, like, where'd you get wh- that from? Is, have you been reading Eckhart Tolle? I have read The Power of Now. Mike, long, long time ago. That's the only Eckhart Tolle I've ever read. Yeah. But that was, min- that was, I don't Be know. the watcher, the observer. Right. Yeah. Cause you are not your mind. You right. are not your thoughts. Right. And if you're watching so your thoughts, then what are you? You know? Podcast. Right. It's weird. Something podcast, essentially the podcast app, deeper. Yeah. Go but there and real. Yeah. And I, I remember realizing that at a pretty young age, just, my own mind could trick me. So I'm obviously not my mind because it doesn't make sense. You know, just I I must be something altogether different to, to even be tricked by it, you know? Right. So then what is it? Such a weird thought is the different dimensions of reality. Or maybe your mind. Yeah. Whoa. (laughs) Yeah. It's hard to even like the real you maybe is a spirit. Right. And, uh, but then what is the mind? I mean, I look at it, they talk about the mind as being the character that you built over your lifetime through your experiences. But it's just, what a trip to think it is. You are not your mind because you can watch your mind and your thoughts. Well, so if you're going to do a video, you right. should do like, like you're an observer outside of this up of us. Yeah. Talking. Your emotions. Well, so we don't even know what we are. Like really, because we think we're our mind and we identify with it and that's who we think we are, but we're not that we're something else. And even on a more simple level, some people identify just with their body. Like they're just this physical being, you know, like they don't even see beyond that. Yeah. I always liked when Ron would say, we, I think I'm like Pat and I'm like kind of crazy and I have like tattoos and I speak my mind and like what I'm sober and it's just like, no. That's what I think how others see me could be totally different and none of it's true. Right. But no, then what is true? That's the it, weird it, thing. It doesn't really matter. I guess you'll never really and, and, know. And Ron, him kind of describing that in a way of like, well, first of all, other people's opinions of me is none of my business and there's just no way I could ever do all the right things to have everybody seeing me how I want them to see me. That's just impossible. So fucking, I just gave up trying and I'm just trying to just, all I'm trying to do in each day is just be honest. (laughs) Yeah. When I gave up trying to be whatever I thought I should be, that's when things really started happening for me. Yeah. Like, like, like I just shared about some shit in the meeting that was probably like, I don't know. Sometimes I, I I'll get, extra specific and vulnerable and honest in meetings. And when I do that in prime time, like I never liked the way the meeting goes because it just seems like after that point in time, 
it's everyone coming up to the point podium telling me what I should do and not like applying it to their life as if they're like perfect spiritual beings. Like the way that like Paul was starting to talk to me. What, what do you think? It's just difficult because from my perspective, when you, you put that out there, I have such a strong desire to, to help you. I want to fix whatever that problem is. Yeah. So I'm going to put that. out that whatever that solution that I think might be, which is great. And I actually really liked how you and how, um, Hamish were, were they, how do you, how you, you guys were kind of like Hamish, like you were there. It was being addressed in a way where it was like, it wasn't, they didn't have the answer. Like none of us have the answer. Right. And each of us has an approach that works for us as far as a solution that's being delivered. Like even you and Paul talking about his sponsor. But when and, Paul, and how, but Paul started hitting me on some like almost like hostile, like I don't have any fears today because I just give it to God. And it's like, I don't believe that. Right. But that's, his, that. that's the language he speaks and he might not have been coming across. Yeah. And then even accurately Billy, from what was inside, but. Billy was like, this meeting is getting like, he started. Well, no, judging. that's when you and Paul started having a, a, a but that's just the way. Well, it it's my belief that if a meeting is run like a certain way, you kind of circumvent and avoid those personal battles, which I think is better for the meeting. But whatever you're running it the way you are, maybe that is better. Maybe you're right. Well, maybe neither is better. Well, that's yeah. They're just different, and and, and this meeting. But if serves, it goes too far into that, yeah, then it becomes no. It started getting yeah. kind of weird there, and then like Mikey tried to say some shit, and, listen, and then this listen, other guy. I was, just, I was just talking to Greg, and I was like, "Yeah, that could have really taken a wrong turn. It, well, it, it got close, but well, I mean, this new guy shows up and he starts spitting." Well, he, but that, there, that, what he, is he doing? He, that guy, there, bam, there was, bam. yeah, and he was hitting himself with a book, and he, every time Pat or someone would say something, he'd be like, there, he was a little off. I thought it was a good beating. I just kind of wanted to, like, rein it back in. Gus left, walked out, you got, you left, and I was like, yo, I'm just going to read basically yeah. what we went over. And, Can you read that? What, what um, is that? The book is right behind you. That's, Why don't you read it? No, that's uh, what we're going to get, that's, we're going to get to that. Oh, okay. Sure. Okay. Yeah, it, be, it becomes so reactionary. Yeah, done. Yeah. In that kind of they situation, where it's just up. all these chemicals pouring in, and they're just reacting, and there's not. Yeah, a and, lot and, of. And I think that gentleness like, left. Well, I mean, and that's just the way it went, and like I think that that's okay, and it just happened that way, and next time, I mean, it's never gotten to that place before, and I do think that. Big Frank has an aggressive, I mean, this guy's thrown books from the podium, like at people cause they right. don't get it. But the whole point of AA is we're all a bunch of people that like can't get it. Like that's why we have to keep going because if we don't go, we're not going to have it. And, and some people are going to have it more so than others. And that's what we're here is to help each other mm. come back to that place. And reading about debt and talking about money triggered my fear in a real way. And I put it out there in a real specific way. And Billy has his opinion of like Tim and Gus has his opinion of Tim. And, and it really all it comes down to is God. And it's hard to speak in a general way. And I don't know what the answer is, but, and that's okay too. But I, you know what? I don't think there's like some big answer. Right. That's another thing that was like kind of annoying when Gus was saying, like he was saying some shit, like well, the answer will be revealed. But I think the answer is just take loving steps in the moment you're in. And like, I just talked to Tim and we're going to meet tomorrow and we're going to like take steps every day is a new step. Yeah. That's wise. I, I forget sometimes too, to, look at the situation and think, what would I do and speak to me instead of to the person? Right. But you don't know what you would do because you, well, I do, I would definitely pray and I would probably pray in a specific way if I had a lot of fear, but so what I I'm saying, know what I would do, but what I'm saying is like the solution. No, I don't know. Right. And, and in each situation it's, you would not, you can never know what 
I should do if you were me, unless you've walked in my shoes and worked with Tim for as long as I have. And right. So you're only getting like what I've told you about him. So you don't really know the full picture and what I've observed, which, which you're, you have a lot of like a lot of what you're saying is true. And that's like what I, about the unmanageability thing. And that's like, that's like a choice that I've made. I've made a choice to work with Tim. Who's a little bit, you know, he, he has flaws, but he also has strengths that I think outweigh those flaws. Same with my wife. Like she smokes and drink and does microdoses. She does all kinds of crazy shit, but like it's works for me. And like the other thing that was cool that we've learned in AA is if a relationship is 51% good and 49% bad, it's worth fighting for. And the other thing that I thought was so cool at the end there is Paul and you, he came in Everyone was good. Yeah, 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 yeah. But 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 I but I still was trying to get to Paul's truth, which it's very difficult for people to get vulnerable and expose their shit, especially alcoholics. Well, it, and just... I, hold on, I was trying to get Paul to admit that he has fearful moments, and it's hard for me to believe that he's never in fear. Well, obviously he's not. That's but no, that's what no he's human. saying. Well, I think his language is a little more. But I almost feel like it would be more relatable if he could be like, yeah, man, I definitely have moments of fear and that's where I need to go to God and it gets removed. And right. It, it just is like from, from my perspective, it was just like such a personal matter for you. And then hearing, hearing so many different people saying, Hey, well this, it's like you said, if, unless you can walk in my shoes, that's where empathy comes in. That's where like all you need is someone to be empathetic. And just so everyone understands what we're talking about is me having shared in the meeting about some financial fear I'm in because we're doing jobs and people are late on paying us and the debt is kind of like not necessarily going down. And that's the thing for me is I feel like the debt should be going down because right now we don't have any overhead and I don't know if we're paying close enough attention or we're not getting paid soon enough. And I was just sharing about some of that financial fear and people were coming in and they were giving their two cents. And I mean, Billy, you, you made it, you took it to a place that was awesome. And you were the only person that got really specific. You asked, is Tim's life manageable? Mm. And then you were drawing the conclude, conclu- you were coming to the conclusion that if he can't manage his own life, how could he manage a company? Yeah. And that's an argument that's been made by different people that know him. Well, like you said, he has strengths and weaknesses. Exactly. His strength is sales and, 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 and yeah, and negotiations. And, and, and in stuff. Tim's defense, his life is exactly the way he wants it. Maybe. Maybe. Well, I don't know if he knows. For, we, I mean, you know. And really, you you put it out there, and then your answer was kind of there pretty quick. And I think not a lot needed to be added to that. Exactly. Right. And but of course, quick. there's a solution. Whether or not it's knowable is, who knows, at this moment. But God has a, you know, I believe God has a plan for our lives. He's seen the outcome already. He knows the outcome. Mm-hmm. And And we need to just trust in those little steps, like you were saying, this one little step is what I need to do. And we need to just trust in those little steps. And then more of the plan will be revealed through that step. Yeah. And then not, not a lot more needs to be said about it right now. We read it right out of the book again. It's it's our thinking and that we have to be aware of and try to put in the positive. And, and I like to break down limitation. Like I automatically limit myself in so many ways. And so there is an art to it and a practice. And Hamish was hitting that too. And Mm -hmm. check out the waveforms. Am I talking too low? Again? Like I feel like I'm as loud as Corey. Just just look at him. <clears throat> Which one is me? The bottom. I'm not sure. Blah 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 blah. <laughs> I think I'm the second one. Mm-hmm. I think so too. I Corey's the bottom one. I don't know why, but like my level is just always like on point. 
Yeah, I'm sure my my waveforms are probably not looking. Yours is looking <laughs> sadder than mine, which is surprising. I know. But like, I just I want like Billy. I just always want. Well, Billy no, it was high when you spoke, but you don't speak. You not, haven't spoke. Yeah. Anyway, go. But just pay attention to it. Okay. Just like I do, <clears> just because <throat> it will help us. Yeah. So Corey, so so what's going on in your mind, man? How many days you got? I don't know what's the date today. Four, the fourteenth. Eleven days. You should be like keeping track. Yeah. Eleven days. He's been reading the book on his own and journaling, and he he texts me at ten and calls me during the day. I feel like we probably should get into some book work or something. A hundred percent. Yeah. Um, and I also feel like I'm totally inadequate because I don't know. Well, no, but what we just went over. Yeah, which is like two pages, which I could do with you. Yeah. But, but dude, those, like those two pages, that's an hour. Yeah. You give him that hour. I give you another hour. I get an hour. You give an hour. And then he needs to start giving away an hour, like mm-hmm. immediately. Mm-hmm. That's the difference between the way. That's the difference between the way it has been presented to me by Michaelis is the difference between the way it, AA, some people in AA think that like you shouldn't be taking anybody through the steps unless you've gone through all of them. But in the book, it says that the only way to treat your disease is by going through the steps with someone else. So that means that you're going to be untreated until you finish your steps because it's in the process of giving it away that's where you get catapulted into the present moment. So if he's only doing it with you, you're not getting that other 50% of it, which is you giving it away to someone else. And I think that he could be fucking awesome at doing this. I already know he's going to be. But who would you give it to? Do you know anybody? Uh, No, not at the top of my head. Well, no, I mean, he could, he could literally be going, giving it to Gus. It doesn't oh, matter so, who has so more it's time. it's working with others. It's not taking them through the steps. Yeah. Well, well, it's just going, it's taking them through the book, which we already went, we already figured out which parts of the book are which steps. Right. So all we do is read. It's not like a, you're not talking to like a sponsor. You're just talking about working with another person. Well, it's also been shown to me that, that the whole point of a sponsor doesn't really serve sponsor or sponsee because we're not really supposed to be relying on another person anyway we should just be working with as many alcoholics as possible and like me and billy have have seen in our relationship like the roles like there are times when he calls me and he's asking me questions that a quote-unquote sponsor would be answering but like we're just two alcoholics trying to stay sober right Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've always kind of had this inclination that like that whole idea doesn't really make sense because like as soon as you become a sponsor, you're automatically starting to attach your ego to that. Mm-hmm. And you're thinking, Oh, I'm like helping this person stay sober when you're not, you're just not. God is helping each person stay sober. Mm-hmm. And through the step work, you find that power and you get, catapulted as Michaelis likes to say into the present moment. There's some humility in that knowing that you are getting as much as you're giving. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And when I'm doing it with him, I'm thinking about how I'm going to give it away. Right. And it helps me do it. So when he starts going through this shit with you, you're going to be like taking notes or whatever that will help you give each piece away as you're being given it. So it also helps you, it also helps you learn it better. So it's not until I give it away that I fully understand it. Right. And then in each experience I'm having like a new, like when I just did it with Billy, like it deepened in a way that like it hadn't with any other person. And each person I do it with, I see new things. Yeah. But it's not really hard or complicated or it's, it's pretty simple. It's like you write this prayer. The first thing you write in the, in the cover of the book is God take away everything. I think I know about this book, about this process and about you, God, so I can have an experience with you. That's the first thing we write. 
And then you're going to have someone else write that. And then you're going to talk about why, what does that mean to you? Right. So what does that mean to you? Just letting go of these preconceived notions of anything. Yes. Really? Yeah. A hundred percent. Including even my idea of God. Uh Uh-huh. And and maybe trying to renew a relationship with God. A hundred percent. Now. A hundred percent. We can be born again every day. Right. And that's, I think, where that term born again comes from. Yeah. To become a born again Christian or whatever. Like, I think that, I don't know. Born is it, anew in every moment. Yeah. Like, is it possible to be born again, like, multiple times in the Christian faith? Well, that's the idea that you're continually born continuously born again there it is because you know when you're born again you're not just like all of a sudden you know oh i don't sin anymore i'm i'm good now right like you're constantly in this cycle of forgiveness and and seeking reconciliation to god over and over and over again so so basically that prayer is allowing us to be born again and every time we do this step work right whether we're doing it with someone else or someone's doing it with us, that prayer, that's the first thing we say every time we do the step work, just to remind us to allow, because you might start thinking, oh, but my God allowed me to drink for 20 years. You might start thinking shit like that, or like, obviously, or, or whatever, like, I don't know, it's just, we just, our mind just takes, grabs a hold of things and just, warps them you know i was thinking about that i wonder if that prayer that we read sort of subconsciously added to this thought but i was thinking you know i'm very much into uh, what would you call this Uh, like the quantum or okay the darkness so the darkness i believe in my opinion is infinite and the light like so the darkness is, is what we don't know and the light is what we think we know and it's just a little flicker candle in an infinite darkness, right? So this forgetting about everything I know, is that what it is? Or I think I know? It, 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 it's, it's God help me forget everything I think I know about this book, about this process, and about you, God. Right. And I'm, I'm like, I really love that idea because even that concept would be difficult for any human because... Even if you for, you try to put aside the things that you think matter, as I know, you still have all the things that you don't really consciously have in your mind that you still know and you run by and you're hardwired with. But I really believe in some way that we have divine power as humans, you know, kind of like made in the image of God. And the stuff we read in the book about healing, and if you could get as right as Jesus, you could perform the same works or even better. Doesn't it say in the Bible even more that you could do even more? And so I toy with this idea, you know, initially because of illness and injury and mental illness and all these things. But it's like in me, I know that there's more, but it requires this true blank slate, this true no thought, this Mm. true oneness and completeness with the, I don't even like calling God, God, because I'm already have an idea so I've been going to calling him the ness, the completeness, the wholeness, the everything just is. And that, I always go to this, it's kind of lame, but in that, mm-hmm. in, that, in that space, if you could truly have an open mind, a blank slate, like no thoughts, that you could have this oneness, and it's almost like the the atoms and, and, and molecules flow through you. Like you can almost feel it happening, which it does happen in science. Even, I mean, chemical reactions are always molecules attaching to other molecules and atoms and switching and it's happening inside us and outside us all the time. But it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I have, it's this. So I almost feel like even religion and like, certain people I feel are are drunk on Jesus. They're not really, well, I can't say anyone else's experience, but it's emotionalism to me, like emotionalism, religion, rather than 
practical or it's their mind filtering it into this, but it could be so much more if mm-hmm. there wasn't the filter. Also the ego. Well, that's part of the filter, the ego, yeah. the alcohol, all that's anyway, I don't know that I'm really getting at what I'm trying to say, but I believe there's this ultimate kind of one that is achievable possibly, or to get closer to it. And the, the remarkable feeling like when you fell on your knees in the meadow, right? You yeah, know what I I'm saying? A lot of the time there's this misconception that it's an, it's a logical understanding of God or that it's this, it's the, no the logic. Men, right. It's this mental like grasp of who and what God is and who I am and, yeah. the, and this feeling. It's not a feeling. It's not a, it's not of the senses or the mind even it's, it transcends all those things. It's, it's, I don't know. It's not even an understanding. It's I just realized something really cool. This is like, like normal people like us trying to talk about this. It's, it's like profound because there's no person that's like more qualified to try to explain this because it's not like logic. It's not like you can't like understand it. Like I guess Jordan Peterson is pretty good good at at explaining it, but like I almost feel like it's just as valuable for us to be trying to explain it for people who aren't on that level. Does that make sense? You're drawing out of your own experience. Yeah. And it's almost more relatable for people who are trying to find it. It's always been there, even when I was a little kid. Like, I I have more words to put it into place, but that thing has always been in there. So I I mean, I guess I could call it Jesus or Christ or God. I think Corey will be... I mean, this is the the main part about trying to stay sober. This is like the, 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 the biggest key to unlocking that ability and... He's like right there. And this is like something that took us years to even begin to try to see or understand, or it's not even that you're we're, that we understand it. It's just that we're like open to it and he's already there. Yeah. Which is interesting. I find that very, well, because he's been doing attractive. this for a long time. But like, just yeah. not. He just hasn't added the sobriety element to it. Yeah, which I, don't, is, I want to steer people like in the wrong way. This is all flu, frou frou, flu frou, whatever stuff. This isn't AA. This is just something that I think about often. Which AA brought me to, <coughs> kind of in a way, or you know. But if this isn't AA, then what is AA? Well, AA is everything, right? Because it's a way of life. It's a lifestyle. It's just that's a preconceived notion. It is nothing but spiritual principles given to you in a way that you can actually apply them to your life. You know, like kindergarten for spiritual principles or something. Like what it's been, what's, what, 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 what Michaelis has re- recently been telling me is AA is only a path to us being the light of God. And that's what that guy said that, Kind of at the end. I don't know if you were there. So Mikey was talking about what he read there. I, the light of God. And, and then he's like, well, let's not suck our own dicks. You know, because he thought that was kind of arrogant, that we were calling ourselves the light of God. But we are. I know. That's what we're trying to be. I know. I'm just, I'm just right. saying yeah. at the end of the meeting there. like He said that? Yeah. And then Mikey got a little offended. And he's like, what? I, don't know. I mean, I guess you could. It, it could be interpreted as arrogant, like, "Oh, I'm the light of God." Well, no, we all are. Yeah, I think you know? Mikey was hoping that he would elaborate a little as, as to what he meant by that, because I, I yeah. don't, I don't know that I fully understand what exactly he meant, but I think I know what you're saying. I feel like he was just saying, "Well, let, that's a little arrogant, you know. Let's not right. put ourselves too high and mighty, or whatever." Right. Which I, think... I could see that as well. Yeah. Yeah, he said it's right back here. Anyway, so so what what? what oh, who put the case in? The case confuses me. I know. I hate <laughs> book I covers. <laughs> I didn't have the case on it. 
If I really understand who I am, I, the light of God, my spirit will be joyful at all times. Life is a condition manifesting growth, spiritual growth, moral growth, intellectual growth, and physical growth. The steps will give me deep spiritual qualities. And so I can relate with that, and I immediately go to, well, what if your dog gets hurt or your child or something? Are you going to be joyful? But the odd thing about that state of mind, that presence, is no, you're not going to be happy about that, but you have a greater, like, even death is not the end in this unknowable truth, if I want to call it, be arrogant again, I guess. Like, maybe it's not truth, but that thing because I'm going to die too. Like life and death, no matter, it doesn't, no longer holds like this sort of literal, here I go again. Blah. Right, but it's Into the, the atmosphere. you don't have to enjoy the outcome of some horrible circumstance, but you can still express joy at any time, even in the midst of terrible circumstances. It's a choice. Right. And even that, does, say your kid does get hurt. Well, at least they didn't die. So you could be joyful about that. I or, mean, we're also, you know, it's just, it's it's just, just a state it of just mind. It reminds me of this thing about worshiping things. Like, and this is another thing that, that, I, that, I ha- that he had me write down, which is cool. Um, the 12 steps are a finger or a guide to get the principles and the power from God. The book is not to be worshipped like other human resources, only my God. So, like, we're not supposed to worship the book or a sponsor or any any human resources, but we do worship human resources, which is why we have an emotional reaction to anything. So, his whole thing is like, if I'm having an, an emotion, if I'm having any emotional reaction to anything, there's an element of worship in that. It's pretty high level. Right. But I don't really need to have a, an emotional reaction to anything. Debt, likes, followers, girls. It's, it's all just a part of the thing that's supposed to be. But Worship. that's like impossible. Worship is something that just human beings do at all times. Mm. You're always worshiping something. Right. It's the self it's the object, the money, power, or wealth, power, success, or God. And if you're doing something that seems menial, it, it still could be an act of worship to God because that's where he's placed you. That's his will for you. That's what he's called you to. So in following what his will for, for you is, that's an act of worship to God. You're always serving. That's all we do is serve. Even the highest king on earth, he's still a servant to something. I was thinking about that too, because Jordan Peterson talks about us as the kings of our own lives, and a king is not what you what you would think. Like oh, I get all the jewels and the gold and the girls and the food. A king is someone who takes on tremendous responsibility and serves on a greater level. It's a matter of authority, over and things, yeah. also has to be a motherfucker sometimes to make the right choices for everybody even though it's going to hurt some so you, people, some people. So you need to be able to stand up for yourself and be assertive. And you can't be like a people pleaser to be a king, a, a good king. I'd say and manage a good kingdom. Right. Yeah. Which I started. I, I love, I just soak these podcasts in man, especially Jordan, but there's a few of them, art of manliness and ologies. Um, Joe Rogan, sometimes that's more entertainment than anything. <clears throat> right. Yeah, Jordan Peterson's just so good at articulating things so clearly. Oh, you mm-hmm. listen to him too? Oh, I've heard a lot of things. Uh, oh, yeah, he goes uh, deep, man. Yeah. He, like, really, like, puts it together, like... Very digestible. Like you said. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and and he's not, like, scared to say no, like... Right. Shit's hard. This is going to be a challenge. It's not easy. Start cleaning your room, which is so profound because when my room is disarray or other things, just not right. 
once I put the effort into that, then I, it starts flowing out into my work, into my billing, into the way I pres- present myself and stuff. Yeah, something as simple as just making my bed right when I get out of it. Yeah. Could really set the tone for my entire day. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, fuck, I didn't, I didn't make my bed, but. No, I, mine, mine's not made right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but that can, something as simple as that really can set the tone for your whole day, your whole, like, say my garage or my workshop or whatever. If it's not clean, my mind isn't organized and clean. Yeah. Like, I'll carry that with me. I want, that's for that saying that cleanliness is next to godliness or something like that. Yeah. And and the other thing that I, I need to, that I find is he says that if you don't have a lofty ambition, your life, you will suffer. I think that's a quote from someone else. And I mean, it, and he just turned it around for me. Responsibility is the essence of life. Uh, like I, my whole life, I tried to avoid that. I got like I, too much right now. But it's good because that yeah. is what brings a better life. Yeah. The 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 the, the moments, yeah, that the, there's a certain fulfill fulfilling there's this feeling of like fulfilledness having things organized and or just like it's like every little fucking thing is just so... It's like, oh, let's make the hats. It's a big job. Everything. It's like, it's just like, it's like design them, get the test, change the thing, get the thing, get the hats, put them on the website, try to sell them, got to ship them. That's just one little part. But it's like once once you figure that stuff out and you start having people doing certain things and it's like... Like we're selling merch now, and really, better, more. Yeah, like we sold like five hundred dollars of merch in like last week because we just finally got this new merch in. But it's just you know you just keep chipping away at it. Like we have more listeners on the podcast. Like the meetings happening every week. Like the followers are going up. More people are learning about the, the learning to lose. And it's just I wake up and I'm like, okay, it's like it's better than it was a year ago. Like, I mean, this wasn't even, so you can imagine where it'll be. And what's so profound about the books we're reading and everything. And I've realized this over time is like, I have an idea and boy, is it exciting. But once you start to implement it within five minutes, you're like, Oh fuck. That's yeah. So the things you truly love happen, but it's almost to me like inconceivable that, even organizing some notes takes me an hour and I got to get up, tape this here, put this in the folder, make a folder, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, how do I ever get anywhere? Everything takes so much time and effort. But I remember I even have it stuck on my mirror in my bathroom. Little baby steps, little baby steps. That's it. That's what makes everything. Yeah. If I think about it the way Pat was just talking about it, I'll get overwhelmed and I'm likely to get none of it done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I got to think, what can I just do right now? Yeah. And as long as I focus on that, then I, then I get through so many little steps that I look back and say, how, how did I, yeah, how did I get that much done? And that's why the power of now is so profound right. because you're in the now then. And, and if you can be present in the now, you're not thinking about the big picture. You're thinking about, you're just focused. You're not even thinking almost, you're just doing right. And, and, and you're not even not enjoying it. It's not even a miserable task if you're present. Right. And Even it's not bills that, and mail and all that shit. Right. And it's not that you can't plan for the future because that's just a task for right now. Yeah. And you can yeah. make goals and things. Yeah. And, and plan. It's, but they just, you're, you're here now. You have your plan and your goal, but you're here now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I get, I go through cycles of being totally overwhelmed and have stuff everywhere and just, I'll just avoid all of it and do something that I enjoy and create another mess and make it even worse. But, and I'm just distracting myself and it gets so out of hand that I, and then once you already have a mess, you're like, I'll just leave these dishes and I'll just throw that over there. I mean, it's already a mess. Yeah. I get this, this overwhelming defeatism. Like there's no point in trying to fix any of it. Just, 
Yeah. What's always astounding to me is at some point you do, you get up and you start cleaning, but you're not really thinking you're just doing Mm -hmm. within a day or two, or it always builds. You're like, fuck, I'm really organized. How did this happen? Thank you, God. I mean, for inspiration or power or direction, because that didn't seem doable. Right. You have to shut out the whole, I can't see it all at once. And I have to just see one thing at a time. Yeah. 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 And it's pretty amazing because I'm really happy with my life right now. <clears throat> my life blew up six months ago and I'm putting it back together. And it was, I came here to Pat's and I was just, holy fuck. For one, I had to face something that's been walking with me for like a decade. That was a big deal. The thing with the girl. With Aestrid. Yeah. And it's so funny that you just brought that up because I, I think I made it pretty much made a decision today that I'm going to make a video. Oh, yeah? <clears throat> well, I hope she doesn't come after me. Uh, I, I'm happy she's not in my life anymore. But it's not, it's not, well, what could she do that she hasn't already, like, I feel like there's been so much space in between the event. She already did everything she could. Yeah. So and, now. And continues what, to on my part. Now, well, so now when this comes out, it's just going to be. First of all, I don't think anyone's even going to see it because I'm only going to post it on YouTube and TikTok. But if for some reason she was to see it, like, what would she do? All she, the only thing she could possibly do is try to defend herself because she looks completely insane. Yeah, in but video. when people try to defend themselves, the first thing they do is they attack the characters of the, ac- the accusers. Well, then that would be me. And me. Yeah, but you're not really... I don't care. I mean, she, you're right. She's already done all she can do. So, she so, can just reiterate what she already has so, and try to like reignite. But it's all, the fire's already out. Like She yeah. already did everything she could. So my thing is like I'm not... I'm not going to be making this video. Like I, t- I talked to my therapist about it. And as long as I'm not coming from a place of anger, like revenge, which I'm not. Like, I'm not even, like, mad. I just want to make an honest piece of... I just want to make an honest video about something that happened in my life, in my house. And I'm entitled to do that, and I have the right to do that, so I'm going to do that. And, <clears throat> I mean, I I think that there are some really powerful messages that need to be... that I want to portray through this video, which is that it doesn't matter how much time you have... It doesn't matter how much, how important you are in AA. This is what can alcoholism can look like if it's untreated. And she clearly did things that were untreated. And, and, and she tried to wreck your life. And also another testament that I, another thing that I think could be an amazing takeaway from this video is here we are six months later and Billy's okay. Yeah, sorry. I don't know much of the backstory. I, I that to, to <laughs> God though, not to. So to he me. had a, a woman who carries a lot of power and influence in and out of the rooms of Alcoholics Anonymous came to my house. Um, and somebody was filming her with a phone and she fucking lost her shit. It ended up being an argument and a fight and she ended up leaving calling Billy's wife and just like saying everything and anything she could to Billy's wife to get him to her to want to leave Billy. And they were already on the fritz. This woman had already had beef with like me and Billy because of this whole CBD thing. Um, and then that night, his wife, his, his baby's mama was like, I don't want you coming home. So she just, this woman literally blew up his life. And she had the power and influence to make a phone call and have that happen when he wasn't even the one filming her. He was just, his, his crime was just like being my friend and at my house and not being as angry at me as she was. So she attacked him. But what we really wanted to do was my birthday, and it was a party, and we wanted everyone to had beef to come together 
and hopefully bond. But, but she it, saw the opposite. Happened. She saw one person filming with his phone, which is just like what we do here. Like Mikey just stuck a phone in your face. Like, but the weird thing about the whole night, which I feel like I almost want to address in the video is that like, <clears throat> she immediately started talking about things that she didn't, it was almost like a test. It was almost like she came in here and started talking about like a lot of very personal. private, personal, vulnerable things in front of people that she doesn't know in a place that she's already like, she wasn't like being like cautious. And it was almost like she was like trying to put bait out there or, or something. something. It was weird, man. She walked into the lion's den with a steak. Yeah. And, 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 and almost wanted to get stir. Yeah, something you know up. why? Probably because they kept trying to tell me to stay away from you, you know? And like, don't you really? pick a side, you know, we're the right side, you're the wrong side. And I didn't, I didn't pick a side and I continued to come here and do the podcast and work with you. I mean, oh, you mean like, and even after the CBD, but even previous to that. And so that's, she is maybe a bit of a power freak. Well, yeah, and this is the kind of thing that's been happening. And I was a loyal, I was a loyal doggy to her for a decade. Right, <clears throat> and I felt a little bit about, I felt a little bit of that too, because I'm a lot like her, and I've been dealing with this kind of stuff my whole life with people like me, who are like alpha people. Mm -hmm. And I felt what I meant when I just said I felt a little bit of that what she felt was I was wanting you also to not leave. Like there was this weird thing. I felt a little bit of that also, but I knew that that was like unhealthy and I was trying to like work that out the right way rather than like do weird manipulative shit to him. Like, I don't think I ever told him to like not fuck with the, her either one of, I never told you like, don't fuck with them. No. But why would you? Because I was with them for years before I met you. Yeah, but like oh, I, yeah, you could have. Yeah. I, that's the kind of thing that like. But I think you're smart enough not to do that. So. But it's not even about smart. It's like that would be succumbing to that part of me, that competitive, like power struggle thing. Which, which, like this happened to me with like Aaron too in high school. Like I've always been a target for people like that. So the first question I would ask is why did they not want you to be fucking with me or, or her? Well, they're, they're, they're saying, and I don't know if this is the true reason, but that you're, you're lost or you're, okay. So you're what? A, bad influence. a lot of alcoholics are lost. Why me? Why, why weren't they telling you to stay away from Max? Like he was obviously lost at the well, time. Well, that's why I think maybe that's not really the truth. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, that's just their smoke, I think. Or but 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 the truth is, I, she didn't want you fucking with me because it was a threat to her. Yeah. Like, and that's the same thing that happened with like Aaron Levant in high school. Like he just saw me as like another like alpha male that he yeah. needed to take down. Yeah. And this is something and so same with this guy who threw a rock through my windshield and because I've always people will notice me and they'll be like, Oh, look, he has like a group of people around him coming to his house. He's like establishing some kind of a I've always been like It's like tribal warfare. Yeah, and I guess I've always symbolized a leader. And it's not even that I'm not even like necessarily trying to be a leader. I'm just trying to have friends and I happen to have a house where people could come to. And I was like the one who was willing to buy a bunch of weed and like sell it to everybody. So naturally I just became like, I guess you could say a leader. Yeah. You have influence. Yeah. And, and that's a threat to someone else who wants to have influence. Exactly. So they, they try to take me down. And I've noticed this throughout my whole life. And my, what I want, when I see someone else who has that, I want to team up with them. Let's partner up. You know? 
I, I, the more the merrier. But that's like a different. I have a very inclusive personality, and a lot of these alpha people are like exclusive. No, I think she's the same too, but the alpha takes over at some point. Well, well, she's the same, but she doesn't want other alphas in her herd. That's why she cut Randy. That's why she well, cuts Well, I think initially people. she wants them, but then when they start to threaten her power. Yeah. Right, there's a fear that that you can't partner. No, she doesn't. She, she she might think she wants other alphas, but a true alpha isn't going to submit to her, and that's what she wants. She wants all the people to submit to her. Yeah, so I wouldn't I wouldn't use the word true alpha because a true alpha is a leader, like the leader of the pack, the wolves. So, well, I guess so because the other one's a challenge. I just alpha. don't think she wants anyone challenging her. I don't, I don't think people like that want anyone to like challenge them or. Challenge her influence, her, her, what is it? What the well, fuck? I'm well, just a pawn. True alpha I'm there. really just a pawn in the game. No, but that, I was just thinking about that though, because like, but that's not true because you are a free thinker, well, right? Yeah. And, and you're not like influenced as easily as people think you are. Like they think that I, I'm buying, drinking all our Kool-Aid, but no, I'm taking the good stuff and leaving what I don't agree which with. Which is even like a higher level because like if he didn't agree with what we were doing here, he would not be coming around. And that's yeah. like, I know that. So that, and that's part of a, something that's attractive. I think we're, all, but there are some people like, I, I worry sometimes about Danielle with this. Who will who will just like follow and not think for themselves? Yeah, and that's that can be dangerous. That's where you get these like cults and a bunch of people killing themselves because yeah. I'm sure somewhere deep down inside in the back of their head they're thinking maybe this is not chill, but they're not listening to themselves. And they're not, and that's where God comes in. Like I think we can decide with God what the best thing to do is. Right, submitting and following doesn't always mean that you're weak or that you're not thinking for yourself. It just, I, I allow myself to submit to something that I agree with. Right. And then as if I don't agree with it anymore, it changes or whatever. I, I have the choice to no longer submit to that. And you have a similar I, personality to me. Right. I, I'll, I'll never take over the leadership necessarily, but I can abandon that. And no longer follow that right. at my own will. Right. And here's the thing about leaders is every leader is also a follower. And to be a good leader, you have to be a good follower. And followers are necessary and important. Everyone wants to be the leader, right? I'm the leader. There's no leader if you don't have a bunch of followers. Yeah. And loyal, good, smart followers, not a bunch of idiots. Yeah. Yeah. It's like I don't even like that that term. Like I almost feel like it should almost be like Mikey, for example, like Mikey's like really helping. Like you could consider him like a follower yeah. of the whole learning to lose movement. Like you could, you could say that, but I don't really see same with Greg yeah. and Wickham and Rudy. And, but like, they're really not though, because they all bring their own leading yeah, so I think leaders to it. So we're all now in the front, like leading together. I just happen to like come up with a name for it because I'm like, well, I think no, a no, way. you are the leader. But I don't really. But want. leader, I think, is a misinterpretation. I think people take that out of context. Like you provide the space, you have the gear, you have ideas, you gather people. You're a, you're a, one of those. I've seen this. My old best friend was but like But I like, I really do want to delegate leading roles. Yeah. But yeah, I guess but you're, you're right. the ultimate orchestrator. But I don't really need to be like right now. I well, would yes, you do. Cause without that, we are, we are all lost. Right. So you have the uniting personality yeah. and vision. Yeah. So it's necessary. Why do you think Colts? I'm watching this show on Colts. Why the, do you the, think they never, they just continue to sprout up and exist? Because human beings are made this way. Everyone needs their role. They feel better, like a pack of dogs. They're more happy when you show your alpha and show them where their place is than if they have to challenge you all the time. Right. It, it, it's good to know your spot 
and, and accept your spot and then do the best you can in that constituent of the whole. Is this boring to you? No, I'm fascinated. Oh, okay. <laughs> look at this. Look at this. Did you see this cult thing that, that Rudy posted? I don't know. I got to take a look. Don't you want devoted followers who leave their families for you, give their money to you, give their bodies to you, give up their lives for you, consider you God, and will kill for you? Don't you want to become a cult leader? There's been a vacancy open. You could fill that void. Here's how. <laughs> so, dude, Rudy is like, Rudy is like, she just found that sound on TikTok. I don't know whose voice that is, but we're thinking about making like cult shirts, <laughs> like running with that whole idea, like almost as like a joke, but like not. Right. Like the learning to lose cult. Like, oh, you're going to call us a cult? Well, we're going to be one then. I don't know. It could be fun. I feel right, like that yeah. would be dope, you know? Yeah. And I, I love it. I don't know why I like cults. Yeah, I like I it. look at religions as large cults. Yeah. Way, like, I don't want to offend anybody, but... What is a cult? Here, pee, yeah, and then get on the microphone. <laughs> Like, what is the definition of a cult? Like, does it need to necessarily be a bad thing? Yeah, I think that generally has a negative connotation. Uh, I don't know. A system of religious veneration and devotion directed toward a particular figure or object. A relatively small group of people having religious beliefs or practices regarded by others as strange or sinister. A misplaced or excessive admiration for a particular person or thing. But yeah, I mean, if this was to be considered a cult, it would be, we would be worshiping like vulnerability and like, right. As an end to itself and and like loss as a loss, pain and struggle and hardship as a path to, Redemption, freedom, peace, and happiness. And that's what it would be. And I think the more people that we have like embracing that, I think it would be really good for the fucking whole world. Like imagine like seeing that type of shit as like a cool, imagine seeing like a disagreement as like an opportunity. Like imagine having a conflict with your wife and being excited to deal with it. Right. To resolve it or to get to the core of where to, yeah. what's the conflict. Yeah. Like knowing that it was going to be dramatic or uh, conflicting or argument, knowing that that was going to be a part of the process, but like embracing it and uh, almost like wanting to do that. So, cause all it calls me like a drama queen or whatever, but it's almost like I've just embraced this idea cause I've seen like, there's this saying that your success is directly related to every, your success is directly related to the amount of uncomfortable conversations you're willing to have. I just read something and just, this just reminded me of it and it's, if that's okay, I'm going to read it from mm-hmm. I feel like I. I feel like I just want to make shirts that say "Learning to Lose." We are a cult. Just straight up. That would be yeah, like what dope. I think would be. Either. Nobody's embraced the cult thing. No clothing company has. No, like that's like dope. It's like super punk rock and like anti. Because everyone's like trying to like use that as like a bad thing, but it's almost there's something amazing about it. I really think you need to use the symbol, maybe oh. the symbol bigger, and then just a little learning to lose or something. So that's the cult. Oh symbol. yeah, it would just be like right. boom. 
Like we are a cult and on the back. It might turn off a lot of people, but who cares? But that's like what's like, dope that's, about that's it. That's why we're the anti. That's what's dope about whatever. it. So what you were just saying, like being excited about getting into a conflict because of what it produces. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's learning to lose. And this is just cause I, I read the Bible every day, different parts of it. This is from a book called James. He was one of the people with Jesus through his mm-hmm. ministry. And he writes, it just says, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials. Like, just think about that. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, when you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Like, he's saying it's consider it joy, like we were talking about earlier, this, this idea of being joyful in a circumstance that's not, you know, it seems bad. Yeah. And I try to put that in practice too. Like the last six months, I mean, I'm doing it more now and like your situation, which bothers you. Yeah. I, I try to look at it that way. Wait, what do you mean? What situation? The financial. Oh yeah. We all have, it's, it's harder. We each have our own area of that that is like difficult for us to do. Like I'm good at certain parts of the thing, but like there's other parts that I'm still really struggling with. And that's just a skill to learn to persevere through those things and yeah. you like get better at it as you. But I think the initiation of the skill is to look at it as a joyous thing right. or a positive thing. Like, oh, right. this is an opportunity. Right. That's what he, Pat was just saying. It's for an- God to prove himself. Or not even prove himself, but to show you, do his thing. Right. And for you to learn, like, I'm God dependent. Again, deeper, because that's really what lightens my spirit, is being dependent on this higher power. Right, that's the key. Yeah. In your weakness. I mean, it wouldn't be a higher power if if I was not dependent on it, you know, like an, it would be an equal power or, you know, right. Or something. Yeah. But we were just talking about like, like if, if, you know, in this cult, it, we would be worshiping vulnerability, trials, hardship, pain as a path to redemption Freedom, joy, growth. Well, that could get misconstrued as well. I think always needs to be worshiping. Like it's, you just read. Wait, what did I say? Always? Did I said always? Wait, 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 what? No, always we should be worshiping only one thing. Well, but a cult is, the definition of a cult is like you're worshiping a figure or an object or like a thing. So in this case, it would be, you know, embracing. Well, well, isn't God a thing? God is everything. Yeah. But in the, in this case, it would almost be maybe not, maybe, we're, I mean, we're not worshiping vulnerability, but we're like Those embracing are principles. it. Yeah, Those are our, our ideals. Yeah, the ideals behind, we're, we're, I guess we're worshiping our own understanding of God. How is that different than religion, though, or AA? Or- it's not really any different than AA, but it's just... It's taking this, well, it's very different from AA because it's taking the whole anonymity thing and turning it completely upside down and saying, instead of being anonymous, we're going to go out of our way to expose our hardships and pain to as many people as possible, knowing that we're going to look bad, but also knowing that that's going to be good. So good for every good. Yeah. Like when, when I look bad, so many other people feel better, but it's not, it's because you're being honest. It's not because you look like a piece of shit. It's because you're being vulnerable. But here's the thing. I just thought of that Nirvana song where it's all been written. What's that song where he says, Oh, like, of course it's not new. Everything that we do is another version of something that's already been done. So we're just 
putting our version of something that's yeah all the best exists. all the best things have Corey's been done. like oh shit I just got myself in a cold I got to get out of here <laughs> no, no. I mean it's just a joke right yeah, yeah. In, the idea that it's a cult is that it's misplaced in in the, the in these ideas and principles of worship and not not God Himself that, right. You know, no, but it would be a people. god. But the the thing that we're worshiping is a god of our own understanding, right? But the thing is, these cults start out that way. They they seem to be actually good in the beginning and help people, and then the power gets the 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 main dude or girl or who group gets so much power they start using it because that's what people do. Of course, people sin, don't they? But like the so, diff- but now but, they can sin in a big but, way cuz they're admired. So but here's good. the difference is in this group exposing your most vulnerable truth is encouraged. So and you would expose I that. would have to be talking about that which I have been, but we haven't even gotten to a point where that's even a thing yet because I'm already being broken down daily and exposed daily for all the flaws that I have. You know what I mean? So it's almost like the nature of what it is would prevent that from ever happening because you would never. So I guess in cults, you never question the ultimate. Yeah. But learning to lose is all about basically question everything. Hey, maybe that could be one of them too. question everything. That's yeah, fun. But so there's this song that Dane wrote called Imitations at Best. And it's all about like. Um, it's all about like Did you know Dane? Mm-hmm. copying. It's all about like we're just imitations at best. He said, hey there, I can see your scrutinizing glare. I can see your discontent. You know you've heard it before elsewhere. And I'm sure you're right on. I guess it's only fair to credit you with the master of the obvious trophy you've stripped me bare. Said, isn't that the thing? We're all just one collective mess of influence, imitations at best. Don't get so down. The profundity of your criticism has fizzled out, meaning like you're not so profound for criticizing me for being unoriginal because we're all imitations of something. The profundity for you, I've long tried to be true and original, but now I've gone and thrown it all away. And I just remember, like, when I stopped trying to be so original, I was able to, like, copy things and use things without being, like, without feeling, like, because that's what we're supposed to do is we're supposed to take from things that are great and make them our own. Mm -hmm. This is probably the best song he ever wrote, and I'd like to try to cover it in like a film. That last part I didn't really. That triggered something in me because uh, I'm on this dating app and and somebody was saying, are you original? (laughs) Yeah, you are. Or I want you to be original, (laughs) but 
You're actually like the most original person. Well, I think that we all are, and it's almost a sin not to be, to try to be something or wear a mask or be what you think you are because you're denying people the real you, and that's what they're really going to fall in love with, even if you're odd. A hundred percent. And it's when we're, <clears throat> it's when we're afraid to, to, to be our, <clears throat> ourselves that, and we're afraid of others judging us. <clears throat> that's when, that's the worst. That's when we're looking, that's when we're in, in the most like. Or is that bad? Because conformity is also good. I guess there is no good and bad. It, there's a balancing act everywhere. No, we're supposed to just be ourselves. And that's an American ideal though. Look at collective societies. You're supposed to, right, like, can, we're all John Wayne over here, but, like... You can conform without being, you know, something true. you're not. That's true. Because you can only hold up and act so long, and eventually that's going to break down, and whatever's built on that is going to crumble with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're right. But you can conform without being false. You're right. Yeah. You're yeah. just your own unique part of that whole that's why it's good to talk about things like this because we hold these concepts and we even think words mean something they really don't or phrases until we discuss them further and i think most people will be bored to shit but i like doing that stuff yeah me too i like exploring these you know so many thoughts i have these philosophical ideas are just very simple ideas that just go unchecked and then they vanish into the void and i don't I don't yeah. know if I ever really processed it properly and it just goes. And the sad thing about it is I feel like sometimes like last night I was speaking in old language. I don't even know where it came from in my head. I don't even know how I know these words like shit like comes through channels at the weirdest times. And I'm like, I didn't even know I was capable of speaking. That like, way. what do you mean? Like old English, like previous United States and English. And you, you can't re I can't now. So it was there and it was wow. happening. Like Shakespearean or like... Okay, I'm watching the like show Middle called English? Taboo. Have you guys seen it? Yeah. It's a good one. Tom Hardy. Um, Anything with Tom Hardy is going to be good. Because the sets are right on. Right. Like you believe it and the acting is pretty good. Yeah. And the concepts, the values of the story... Well, it's the archetypal story. It's like but... gypsy, like magic. How far in are you? Oh, no, I haven't got to any magic. No. Are, it's are we pretty... talking about the same show? Taboo. I mean, Tom Hardy. I don't know who the people are. I mean, the main it's guy 18, is like a... 14. Yeah. The, dude, the, the star of that show is like a good-looking, badass guy, Tom Hardy. And he's a good actor, too. Yeah, he's the best. He's, he's, yeah, it's really good. I mean, I actually didn't like finish it. I could see how you, it's, it's boring. Like, it's gray and dark and wet. And slow. And slow and old, but like... But I was sifting through hundreds of shows going like, there's so many, how come not one of you them You picked a really good one. What that, service is that on? I want to look for that. It's Hulu? really good. Hulu? Well, the thing about... Or just Hulu? The thing about like, you know, shows is, is you, you have to look... Before deciding to get into a show, you have to look and see what it got on IMDb, mm-hmm. right? So Where this eight point four. That's good. That's yeah. like so good. Oh. If it's up, if it's above an eight, it's um, you, you you should watch it. That one. Yeah. Yeah, it's really good. But I don't. I I stopped watching it because I kind of felt like I was not understanding what was happening. Well, it's interesting because there's a real, there's true history in it too. This is when the United States was breaking from Britain and there was a war and he, I don't want to give spoil alert, but you know, he, he inherits a strategic point and the East Island company right. who is all powerful at this point is his enemy. And his, and you know. He's, yeah, he, his dad gave him like, he left him a part of land which has like a dock on it yeah. or something or it's like a port where you can like ship shit and he's like not giving it up and it's also their entry from there to china which is a big deal so and he blah, basically blah, blah. and there's slavery involved because it's at the time and yeah. it's it's interesting so he basically has and they say the n-word Really? Oh, fuck, they must have made this show previous no. wokeness or something. With real movies and stuff like that, you can you can do that. 
Yeah. So you got to get up early, huh? Yeah. Me too. Not as early as you, but. Yeah, I was up at four today. Wow. Yeah. Where, are you, where are you going? Um, tomorrow, I think uh, Pasadena. What are you doing? Working on a pilot for a CBS show. One more day of shooting. So, like, what? Oh, man. Well, so, that's good. Tomorrow's your last day. and then you. Can... Yeah, but then I'm working on a commercial Wednesday to Saturday. Oh, okay. <laughs> what commercial? I, don't, uh, I think it's a Verizon commercial. So when you so – a, so someone's paying for a pilot and they don't know if it's going to become a show? Right. Wow. We shoot it just like a – it's a most, one episode of a new idea. Most pilots never go. Most don't. Most. Don't. I just need – I need to get a pilot made. I made a pilot, but it's I. I made it, so there was no, the production value is not there. The content is fucking there, though. Yeah, it's me and Oleg like fighting in the fucking sand dunes over like. Oh, that's the, my this, favorite. Where you take the chair, this all-time favorite of all your so things. Good, you take bro. the chair and you go up over the sand dune or something. Yeah. It's real though, because you're really pissed. Yeah, it was. It's just yeah, it's super raw. And the cinema, his the way he caught it with his camera, it was so beautiful too. Yeah, the cinematic part. Some of, of that. Well, I mean, we just we were at this location that was just insane. Where did you shoot it? Well, I mean, a lot of it's shot in this house, and um, but we went to this place by like Pismo Beach or something, yeah, okay. where the sand dunes are, to like take photos. And I wanted to do a video, and then Oleg and Veronica started yelling. We got into this big argument about like them not letting me just shoot. Like I wanted to get like a a clip. Cause I was had an inspired moment and he was trying to take a photo and I was like, and then he, he, he took a clip. He, he did the video. He did a short minute video for TikTok, but the sound was bad cause there was a lot of wind. And I was like, ah, now, now, and I'm not like an actor, but I felt like this moment. And then he was like, yo, and I was like, you need to cover the, the speaker when you film it. So you're not going to get the wind. And then he was like, no, I'm, I'm taking this photo first. And then it just became, Veronica got upset because it was like all about me, but like really it was like a video I wanted to make for us. And Is Oleg an alpha? Yeah, I think so. Which is tricky for him because he doesn't speak good English and. It makes it hard for him. Like back in the Ukraine, he could get away with that. But here he's, you know. Maybe that's part of his natural tendency to like butt heads with you. For sure. Do we want to wind up? Yeah. So you're sober. Yeah. Oh, we that's didn't great. really get much into that, <laughs> but yeah, we got a little bit. In there. No, that's it. It's all. I mean, I, I guess my only question would be like, is there anything else that transpired between that last podcast and you decided to get sober? that you want to share on like what, what, like what you, you, you went to this, you, you went and got one more drink or what happened? Well, after the, after the podcast, I did a drink like that night. Yeah. Right. I went, I went home and got loaded. Wow. And what, what were your thoughts when you were doing that? Just, I feel like a hypocrite. Wow. Cause we're talking about all these principles and, I can't even apply it. So, like, so you got home I, and you did, you, 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 you drank what, how do you drink? Like I drink, I usually start with tequila and then, so you drink, you put, you pour a little bit of tequila in a shot glass or in a glass, just or, in a glass and just either drink the whole thing, take a couple shots at a time or, or sip on it and then, you know, try to get loaded pretty quick and then drink beer to maintain that. So you got home and you drank some tequila. Yeah. And wow, then, and that's like at one or two in the morning or something too. Yeah. And, and you were watching, you were, were you, what, are you, what are you doing? What else are you doing? Sometimes I'll put on just music huh. and, you know, depends on the day, but sometimes I'll just, you know, get loaded, play video games or put on music. What or, did you do that night? I don't remember. Huh. That sounds nice. And, and, and is your wife home? No. If she was, I probably wouldn't be getting loaded. 
So where was she? She has her own place. Yeah, she has her own place. Oh, right. Okay. So do you have a girlfriend? Yeah. I've, no, no. Uh, he, that's his fiance. Right. He has a fiance. Oh, uh, okay. Sorry, so why you, do I answer you guys questions? Are, no, it's okay. No, it's good. No, but so, <laughs> so, so you're going to be getting married because you already went over all this with him right. on Not the phone. It, but. Yeah, we would have been married in May, but because of the whole lockdown, we couldn't have our wedding at the at the venue because you know we were like seven weeks away from our wedding when the the whole world shut down so we postponed it till september and then realized that wasn't gonna okay happen. i want to ask you about her yeah but before we get to that i want to i want to ask you do you ever think about like i i think that there's something like cool and like i don't know romantic or something about like drinking like have you ever seen mad men no, I'm, you know, like Don Draper. Yeah, you know, like Matt. You know, like back in the day, people would just like drink, like like detective movies. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Do you ever think about that shit when you drink, or or you just fucking? What do you mean, just the romantic idea? Uh, yeah, of like I don't know, like oh, I'm just having a fucking glass of whiskey or whatever. Like I'm a adult. I don't know. Yeah, I want it to be normal or just like right. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> One time Joe, Joe was just here the other day and he was like, hey, do you, we're going to go hiking with Joe. And, and he was like, do you want some water or whatever? And you're like, no, I'm good. And he's like, do you want some Gatorade or we're going to go on this hike? And you are, you're like, no, I'm, I already got, I'm good. And you had like a water, he had a water bottle filled with like vodka or something. It was probably tequila. Tequila. Yeah. Who did? He did. Oh. And Joe was like, yo, like I told Joe that you were like, going to do the deal and he was like right on he was like yeah he was he had no doubt in his mind that you should be yeah neither did you. i think he and i have had conversations too about it same with your brother too like your brother that night in my house was like yeah he needs to be and i was like looking at him like who the fuck are you to tell (laughs) anyone who needs to be you need to be fool like you both should be probably but i don't again like i don't know but if i was to have guessed it would have been him not you but sometimes the real ones hide it well, better than. Yeah. Well, maybe both of you need it. Who knows? Right. Is Joe a good friend of yours, or you end up working with him or something? Yeah, I've known Joe for a long time. I don't know, since like eighth or ninth grade. Oh, wow! We played football together, and, and you know, and so he and weird. he and my brother were good friends, and we, we and we all hung out, and we were all the good brother friends. that was here that yeah night. yeah my younger brother Kelly. And he he got into the industry also, and then, you know, on his own, and we were able to hire him and, you know, work on shows together. And Still, sometimes you end up on shows together? Yeah. He seems like a good dude. Oh, he's a great dude. Yeah. Yeah, he's one of those guys, very, very not judgmental. I f- you know, I th- that's probably why he... He just knows what he knows. Cause I, 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 he's easy to open up to, to uh. talk about things in a real way, like... I never felt judged by him. Right. I felt very easy to, you know, be honest. Why, why and is he like that? Has he just always been that kind of way? I think he's just that kind of person. He's just has a level of compassion for people that. Yeah, nobody seems very friendly, very non judge. Yeah, like just a real kind of open, warm person. It's cool. Yeah. I wanted to ask about your your your, your girlfriend. Is she gonna be stoked? Have oh yeah. Her? Yeah, we've talked about her. She's uh, she's. I was gonna say usually like the girl that you're with is like knows or she, she she's what she what did you say to her? Um, I don't know. I think I just told her, hey, you know, I I think it was the night I came over here and talk with Billy I was like hey I went over there I, you know I decided I'm I'm not gonna drink mm. and and she just started crying because she that's something that she wow and I have talked about and she knows where you that's know. fucking amazing yeah that's something that she you know I'm sure she prays about he and, says so he says it so casually I know like that's pretty profound that's like, like I yeah, wish yeah, we had yeah, fucking you know. talked about this an hour ago <laughs> But she doesn't yeah. know really the extent of it either. Is what you're saying? Like you kind of hide it. No, I did. She? I did hide it from her a lot. But she probably has a pretty good idea. Yeah, but there were times where she found, you know, 
a bottle here or there. Or so you're not getting sober for anyone except for you. Right. That's, but that's saying. like, you're, only you're, way it, works. it didn't work trying but to do it. For, you know, have you tried anyone. before with other people? Yeah. And there were times like the beginning of the quarantine, she really, you know, I was drinking a lot at the time and she really wanted me to get sober and I just kind of did it for her. Like, okay, I'll, you know, and I went about 60 days Huh. And then, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't for me really. So it didn't, and it was me just like powering through on my own will. Right. And, you know, I just, it doesn't, it's not going to last like that. Wow. That's fucking amazing. See, that's the other cool thing about this is like, God, you, you, our lives just become better than we ever could have dreamed. And it's not, this is a promise. There's promises in this book. Oh no, don't open that thing again. Oh, no, the first, the first, the first promise is this is the story of how many thousands of men and women have recovered from alcoholism. We can't recover. And then like all of a sudden it's like alcoholism, which is not even the alcohol. It's the, <clears throat> yeah, but like the, I think what they mean here though is like, the obsession to drink will be, can be, and will be completely removed before we're halfway through. We'll be amazed before we're halfway through. Like I don't, when I walk up into my room, it smells like weed because she just has a bunch of weed right now from DDA. That's like really, sm I don't even, I don't even, I, if, if I really think about it, like, dude, it would be fucking amazing to smoke a, bowl or a bong load or a blunt like it would be i really do like want to do that but i like don't like i don't really i don't like i could talk about it and not even like have to well if you think it through no like the obsession to do that is gone yeah that that was the weirdest thing to me is like i couldn't go one day yeah neither could not I. even a day Bro, I couldn't go, I couldn't go, I couldn't go a half a day. And that was making promises. This is it. Tonight at midnight, I'm finishing this yeah. up and that's it. But for me, it wasn't even just smoking weed. It was like taking pills and the smoking weed. It's like getting that fucking euphoric feeling. Not anything less than that was like not okay. Like if you were, if you were just like, oh, let's just smoke weed today. Like that was not enough for me. I would, I would. I would smoke it, but it would not be enough. I would be obsessing over the pills every day. I couldn't go 30 days like you did. And then at some point you're like, Oh, you look back and you're like, fuck, I'm not Jones. And I don't have to all. sit on my hands at all. I don't, I haven't even thought about and, it. And that comes more and more like it might be removed for a while and then it'll come back a little bit. But like, it, it, it eventually just co completely goes away. But like, I think the more we do this, the quicker it goes away and, and, and the longer that lasts the, 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 the feeling of like it, that obsession being remote, being gone. It's like a muscle that, it's strengthened and, and it gets strengthened by this shit. Yeah. I have a lot of experience too of staying sober for a week, three days, 30 days, and then going back. So the initial Jones is kind of gone, but the thought still got me back. Like I just, in my heart of hearts, I wasn't, I didn't want to be sober. I just didn't want to have a shitty, painful life, I think is. And I didn't really connect all the dots for many years of that. So, so here's the deal. Before you drink, you have to, uh, we're not saying you can't drink, do whatever you want to do. Right. But just before you drink, you have to try to call Billy. And if he doesn't answer, you have to call me. That's it. Because like just talking about it yeah, and, and, then, and then by the end of the conversation, if you still want to drink, you're going to fucking drink and we're still going to be homies and you're still going to come to the meeting and everything's going to be all good. It doesn't need to be. That's true. We won't, we this, won't judge you. It doesn't need to be this I mean, crazy saying. thing because it's really not. It's like you've been drinking for fucking 20 years or more. So what's the big deal? Like it doesn't need to be like this big deal. It just needs to be like today you want, you, you don't want to. And 
The only thing I think about that is if you really want to drink, you ain't calling nobody. Well, but that's the thing, though, is if <laughs> yeah, you make that, a commitment to call us before yeah, but, you drink. Yeah. That's the thing is if you're thinking about it. Right. See, the, the, the relapse doesn't right. happen like it, you don't. Nobody ever just slipped and fucking whoops and just drank a bunch of fucking alcohol. It right. like we think about it before we do it. So you have to call and put that out there before you are like really making plans to do it. Right. That's the hard part for some people. For me, it wasn't that hard because I understood right away that like when I call someone else, it's good for them. Right. You have to understand. That, you have to, that thought helps. You have to know that. Right. You have to know that like me answering your call is pretty much, it's kind of like me doing this. Right. Which keeps me sober. Which is weird for me because I almost never want to answer the phone, but I do it and yeah. it, it helps. Yeah. Even though I don't want to do it. <laughs> yeah. Don't, that doesn't, I mean, I don't want you to think you shouldn't call. Me. No, I understand that thought <laughs> though. I, yeah. So how are you, how are you feeling about all this? Pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. There's, I think one thing I wanted to say that was on my mind just coming into this was there's this fear when I think about not drinking in like in the future, which already that's a trouble. Yeah. But the idea that I'm going to miss out or something or that I'm not going to enjoy, how can I enjoy life? Cause that's, yeah. I always look to it for enjoyment in these situations. Like if I'm going to go do a project, I'm going to go work, you know, on some wood carving or wood burn, you know, there's so, I'm so used to the idea of having a drink with it that I'm going to miss out on some enjoyment. <laughs> yeah. I get that. Well, that's just future tripping. Right. And it's not true. It's not real. We can enjoy everything, you know, and, and the other thing is it's almost like we enjoy it more in a way because we know that we're not, we know that monkey's off our back. Right. Because like, yeah, you can enjoy the wood stuff. I can enjoy making music loaded, but like. But I just, I'm deep down inside, I still got this thorn in my side. Right. And it's like, ah, I just, y- y- anything is better. Yeah, if I'm really honest, there's no, there's nothing about the drink that's going to make that experience better. I enjoy sculpting things out of wood right. because of what it is. Yeah. The you drink can, isn't going to make it better. No, if anything, if it's anything. It's going to get in the way and slow it down and. Yeah, if anything, you can enjoy things even more and feel more. And right. It's just a little bit harder to get to that place. Or maybe it doesn't need to be harder. You know what? I was thinking, you know how you, you said it's a, it starts with a thought? Mm-hmm. Maybe if you even find yourself irritable or extra, you know, crabby and pissed off, you should just send out a text mm-hmm. because that's probably where it's already working on you or it's conceived in it yeah. yeah but also in the early stages of sobriety it's like i don't even know if it's if it needs to be related to any kind of negative it's just we just want to just doesn't matter if it's mm. good bad yeah. light it's dark constant, yeah. we just think about getting loaded and we just want to get loaded and that's it but what i'm saying is if you're already in a bad way your chances of right going for it might be more. Yeah. Like today with, with 15 years of sobriety, like when I, the times are when I'm like really thinking about, wow, that would be nice to just get high right now. It's when I'm like not doing good. It's when I'm in a lot of fear about something or like angry with her or someone or something and I'm just like, I just want it to go away. Yeah, anger seems to be the biggest one for me. Yeah. That leads me to think that that would help somehow. Like, or, yeah. or like joy. Like it's these two extremes. Yeah, I was thinking that too. If you're feeling real good too. Yeah. You know what does it for me? A sustained, a sustained problem. That it, I, it's continuous for a period of time. And then finally, I'm like, fuck, it would be so nice to check out just for a little while. Mm-hmm. What do you get angry about? Uh, different things. Like if I'm in an argument with my fiance or something about, you know, this year was hard. Having to postpone the wedding and all these things is just, 
neither one of us like that idea. But like, what would you argue about? Um, whether or not it was necessary to have a big wedding and just right. do it somewhere else. And, and you were, like, you, you obviously it. were just down to just not have a big wedding. Right. I mean, I was married before she wasn't so uh-huh. that's different for me than it is for her. I didn't really want to spend a bunch of money on the wedding. Even my first wedding, I was like, shouldn't we well, put that? I. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> shouldn't we put that money towards something else? Well, they're ridiculous. They're so expensive. You yeah. don't even know, bro. Especially when we did. And then afterwards, like, we shouldn't have done that. We should have put it into a house. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> wow. <laughs> that one was, that was, that's old resentment. Wow. <laughs> yeah, well, I know things he can get angry about is his past relationship, you know, the nut that he has to come up with every month and all the oh, situation. Yeah, that, and, that's a stressor, yeah, financially, yeah. but. So it, it always comes down to selfishness and self-centeredness. Pretty much. Yeah, you're right about that, even though it's hard to see sometimes that I'm being selfish and self-centered. Mm-hmm. Like in his case, I'm like, fuck, I'd feel the same way. But there's definitely me thinking of me in that sense, that it's selfish. Like, ah, oh, poor me, and... Me, 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 this, and me, that, and um, blah, blah, blah. I want this, I don't want that, I like this, and me, 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 I. But at the same time, I chose that, you know. And that's where the fucking freedom comes, is when you finally look inwardly and you take responsibility for all your actions and all the stuff that you did and and all the decisions Mm. that we make. And there's literally like never a time where when I should be upset with anyone else except for myself because I'm just not accepting something exactly the way it's supposed to be. Hmm. That's what the, this program taught me. Yeah. Oh, I just think of this instance when I decided to get on the back of a scooter with somebody I knew was an idiot and change my life forever. See, that's the thing, though, is there are certain circumstances where it's hard to see that it was my part. Like if someone just walks up to me and but punches me. But it was me. my decision. I knew I talked to this person for like a half an hour before. Please, just be cool. Drive safe. I just need to pick something up. So I, I, it was my decision. Oh, well, I'm still alive. I'm still here. We're talking. And the God thing comes in when it, when it isn't your fault. It re- some things really aren't our fault. You know, like someone could just walk up to us and rob us out of nowhere. And we could be in like a safe place. And, mm, and that's, that happen too. that's just like. I had my head a, stomped in. Yeah, he's had some things that yeah. have happened to him that are really just not. That wasn't my choice. <laughs> but God is able to make. I didn't even talk good shit. Out, of, out of our evil choices. Yeah. And make us who we are. Yeah. Well, that's how I can look at it as a good thing. I wouldn't be the person I am, even if I am more than half, well, broken. In fact, I don't even know how I'm not, like, crippled or something. All the shit. But I'm here. And uh, it makes you who you are. And, and you can have empathy and affect people but i'm a selfish motherfucker what do i care about that you know Mm. but when i can really be connected i can see it as all a beautiful journey and the closer i get to death i can see that more clear right on um good talking thank you guys love you guys yeah that was a great talk yep good night thanks